In this video, we're going to discuss the third law of thermodynamics. Now, as we've been discussing entropy, we've defined it with the following formula. We've had delta S is equal to dQ over T, right? It's the integral of this expression, right? Now, immediately, you should start asking yourself, whenever you see any property in the denominator of any defined quantity, what happens when this guy becomes zero? All right, so what happens at zero Kelvin? All right, what happens once we reach zero Kelvin, right? Uh, you're familiar with zero Kelvin as our absolute zero temperature. And we know that it's a thing, right? Is there's a zero Kelvin, our absolute zero temperature. So then what happens to our defined entropy, right? Uh, what happens at zero Kelvin? We know that if we divide by zero, that's the mathematics cardinal sin that we can't do. So what happens when we actually do get to zero? Um, this guy would become undefined. So there was a famous experiment uh, that was done to try to actually reach zero Kelvin. And it was this experiment that I'm outlining in the figure to the left. And it's called adiabatic demagnetization. Adiabatic demagnetization. Right now, you're familiar with the word adiabatic. The system was set up in such a way that there was no heat transfer to the surroundings, um, that everything that was going on was a product of the properties of the system. Right? Uh, basically, what we did and well, what was done in this experiment is that you take a material, right? If you have any random material, um, there's going to be a defined magnetic moment for every molecule that makes up that material, right? Um, and this is something that you'll get a better definition of in quantum chemistry when you talk about something called dipole moments in, in great detail. But at this point, you already have a, appreciation for uh, every molecule having some level of magnetism, right? In any property, it's going to be more or less randomly aligned, like you see in this, um, in this figure on the left, right? You'll have these particles with magnetic moments that are pointing in random directions. Now, if you apply a magnetic field to that material, then you'll actually align those, magne those uh, magnetic moments for each of your particles will be aligned with the applied magnetic field like you see in, on the right. So the idea here is to apply a magnetic field, align the magnetic moments, and then demagnetize it. As you demagnetize it, there's going to be heat that's lost from the system, and that's going to decrease the temperature, right? So basically the idea, there, this plot is of the temperature and the entropy, and the purple curve is the magnetized material, and the green is the demagnetized material. The whole idea is to keep jumping back and forth between these curves, right? So first, if you're starting with the demagnetized material, you magnetize it, right? So this first step here is an isothermal magnetization, right? So that first step is an isothermal magnetization. Right, so in an isothermal process, you magnetize the material. This is going to uh, increase or decrease the entropy Right. And so once you uh, once you demagnetize the material. Right. So what you do in the second step. Is an isentropic demagnetization. So an isentropic. Demagnetization. Right, so then we go down here, right, isentropic. So isentropic meaning that the entropy is held constant, right? So that's the second step. And then you just keep doing this, right? You keep doing this enough times, you take finite steps toward a lower temperature, right? And this experiment uh, was with the intention to try to get as close to zero Kelvin as possible, um, but that didn't happen, right? There's, there's, they weren't able to get to zero Kelvin. And the third law of thermodynamics is really highlighted by this experiment. What the third law tells us is that it is impossible to reach zero Kelvin in a finite number of steps.
So the third law says it is impossible to reach zero Kelvin in a finite number of steps. Right, so basically this is telling us that, you know, and it's, it's a law of thermodynamics that you just can't reach zero Kelvin. So that means that we're actually good with our definition of entropy, having temperature in the denominator like this. Um, we, won't, we will never get an undefined entropy because it's actually impossible to reach zero Kelvin in a finite number of steps. Now, when you do reach zero Kelvin, what this shows, right, because you notice that the entropy uh, continues to decrease as the temperature decreases as well. Another way to state the third law of thermodynamics is that the uh, entropy of a perfect crystalline solid is zero, right? So, and you can only reach that at zero Kelvin. So if we think about a theoretical system where we could take an infinite number of steps towards a lower temperature and getting closer and closer to a perfect crystal, then we can reach zero Kelvin. But um, in all practical purposes, even for most theoretical systems, it's impossible to reach zero Kelvin, right? So what this sets up is a concept called the absolute entropy. Since we know that at zero Kelvin, we have an entropy of zero, it actually gives us a reference point for calculating entropies further, right? So since we know that a perfect crystalline will be zero, uh, the entropy of a perfect crystal will be zero, we can define something called the absolute entropy, right? So we usually use the superscript circle, like this is our standard absolute ent uh, entropy. So it's a function of temperature. And basically now you know you can start at zero and go to whatever temperature you're trying to calculate the absolute entropy at, right? Now you'll have some function that's a function of temperature and integrate over that function to get the absolute entropy. Now notice here when uh, writing out the absolute entropy, I didn't write delta S, right? We've always in thermodynamics write these quantities as, you know, delta S, delta H, right? Because you have to take a difference. But the power in the absolute entropy is that we know what the lower bound is. We know that it's zero. At zero Kelvin, you will have an entropy of zero. So you can define your absolute entropy without having to refer to some initial entropy since you know that at zero Kelvin, it's going to be zero, right? That gives you a reference point. Now, a note about this integral. Um, it can be fairly long and tedious, and it can include phase changes depending on where your temperature rises to. Like imagine if you were trying to solve for the absolute uh, entropy for water uh, in a range of, you know, negative uh, 25 degrees Celsius to like 200 degrees Celsius, right? you're going to have water go through every single phase change over that region, right? So if you're sol let's say you're solving this integral, right? You're trying to solve for the absolute entropy, right? And let's say you're starting at zero, right? So first you'll have a first initial integral here, right? From zero to T sub M. So um, T sub M is going to be our melting temperature. So this is whatever temperature your particular substance melts at, assuming that it's a solid at, um, you know, it's got, obviously we know it's going to be a perfect crystalline solid at zero Kelvin. So from zero Kelvin to whatever your temperature melts at, you're going to integrate over the heat capacity of the solid over the temperature. Right. So that that would be your initial integral. Then you just include the uh, en entropy of the fusion, right? The entropy of the melting. Right, you just calculate that using the enthalpy over the temperature at which it melts at. Right, then from there, let's say that the temperature that you want to calculate here is is well over the boiling temperature of your substance. Right, then you're going to have another integral that's going to be from your melting temperature 
to the boiling temperature and you're going to integrate over the heat capacity of your liquid over the temperature right then you're going to uh, add the entropy of vaporization right so you'll have delta h of vaporization over t over tb right so whatever the boiling temperature is right so you're just accounting for the phase changes in this integral right and then from there you just go from the boiling temperature to the temperature that you're interested in and then you'll have the heat capacity of your gas over the temperature right so make sure the the main key takeaway here is that you're actually including those phase changes into this integral when you evaluate it right so we have to have one phase change there one phase change here right what you can't do is just blindly put in a heat capacity function and just integrate from you know whatever some low temperature to a higher temperature that you're interested in without accounting for those phase changes those are distinct values that you don't need to integrate over that'll have to be included in this sum in order to solve for the absolute entropy